Hi and welcome to this KinoMaster tutorial. I'm gonna share with you different editing tips on how to use the app KinoMaster on your mobile phone. Okay, so I'm assuming you have a lot of footage that you have filmed with your mobile phone and now you want to edit it into a cool movie. So uh, let's open the app KinoMaster that you have hopefully downloaded by now. When you open the KinoMaster app, it will look like this. So on the right side, you have an overview of all the different projects you have edited. And um, you also have the little button in the bottom where you have your different basic settings. So you have your uh, basic information about the app. You have different standard editing settings. And you also have the information on your app, uh, on your project that will be saved. So to start a new project, you basically just push the plus sign and then you have to select the format of your video. Here you can select either the, the horizontal format, vertical format or the square format. And uh, you have to be aware of which format you choose here because you cannot change it afterwards. So most of the time you would just want to choose the basic horizontal format 16.9. So that's what we're going to do. So before I start introducing the different features, let's just import a clip so we have something to work with. So I go to the top of the circle where it says media and I will add some media from my library. So let's take an interview, for instance, that I have made here. And let me also take another piece of interview and um, three different pieces of interview. Now I have chosen three different interviews. I push the top right corner and then um, here is some unedited interview. So let's start with the first interview bite and just clean it up and get all the unnecessary uh, clips around it away. So let's hear volunteering at Cafe Melbourne. Well, I think if you're looking for a community. Okay, so here you can see this is where I want to start him. So I will just zoom back a little bit, pinch the finger, and let's just try that out. I press the clip and then I go up to the trim split scissors on the top. And that will give you different options. So split at playhead, I will push that one, and that just cuts my clip into two. Then I will push the part that I want to have deleted. And on the left hand side, you can see the trash can. I will take it out. Now let's hear if I cut it in the right place. You're looking for a community, a family. Uh okay, so I cut it a bit too much. So I can just push the clip on the left hand side. Here, you can see I can push it out a bit. So I can see, I think this is about where he should start. Well, I think if you're looking for a community, a family, uh, some good friends and... Okay, so this is a good place to start. I've made so much great, met so much great people here and did so much cool stuff and interesting events. I can only recommend. Here we go. Yeah. So this yeah. is the bar area where the volunteers do their, all their work. So that clip starts in the right space. Manage beer, bottle beer, coffee and some food. Uh, all organic. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so he says yes, so I will again just push the clip, press the scissors, and you can see instead of just splitting at playhead, I can also use a top option which is trim left of playhead, so that automatically just deletes the beginning. Let's see how that worked. Table is usually considered a volunteer table. Okay, so that's the right place. I cut it, and now I have my interview bites. And let's see at the end of it. Uh, everyone's welcome. Okay. So let me just give you an overview of the different features in this app. So if we start with the round circle on the right side, you can see the top folder is the media folder, and that's where you can import your different pictures and videos or whatever you have saved in your different folders. If you have an Android phone, it will look a little bit different, of course, uh, but it's the same concept. So here you import your media. Then you have the layers on the left-hand side that we will also get back to. 
but here is where you can again import media, so that's pictures or a video that will come on top of the already existing layer. So it will add another layer to it. You can also give your video different effects. You can put text, text on your video or titles. Um, you can overlay it with different things and you can also write, use handwriting. I've never used that option. I'm not sure how it works on the phone. So uh, in the bottom of the circle, you have the record, which gives you the option to make a voiceover of your video. On the right hand side, you have the audio where you can either import music uh, from the Kindmaster library or from music that you have stored on your phone or from different recording, maybe other voiceovers that you have already recorded on your phone. So um, on the top right corner, you have the share button when you are finished with your video. You can export and share it. Uh, you have the play button down to the right and then you have the marketplace on the left side of the circle, which is the KineMaster Asset Store. And if you have the, uh, now I have paid to have the KineMaster version, but you might have a little trash bin in the top right corner of your screen. And if you push that one, you can see options in order to buy the app, so you remove the watermark. Uh, on the left hand side, the most important button you will discover is the undo button. Um, <clears throat> on top, further down, you have the uh, capture and save where you can freeze different clips, capture different clips. Then you have your project settings uh, for the audio, the video uh, and the settings. So it's general settings that you can save. And then you have the timeline. So it gives you a different format of your timeline. And at the very bottom, you have the start and end button. So it takes you to the start and end of your clip. So I will push back on the timeline button and get back to the project. So now let's start uh, adding some layers to the interview. So to spice it up, we want to give it some cutaways. So now I will show you how to add some layers to your basic video. So for instance, here we have our volunteer audience that tells us about the bar and how the volunteers are working at the bar. So let me find some layer pictures of footage of volunteers being active at the bar. And for instance, I will choose this clip of another video that I wanna put on top of when he's speaking. So when it comes into the frame, you just have to pinch with two fingers to make it big. And now you can see it's located underneath the clip. So let's hear when he's speaking. All their work, it's usually two people on shift and they manage beer. Okay, so you can see two people on shift. So here's a little clip of them working. We just need a few seconds. And maybe we wanna have another layer. Again, I go in and find another clip that shows maybe it's um, okay, so here we have another clip of a volunteer making coffee. Maybe we want to show that one as well. Okay, so now we have two different layer clips. When I s just scroll through, we have first the two people, two volunteers, and I have another one of one other volunteer making coffee. Again, to cut the clip, I just push on the right side of the handle and then I move it in. So now it's also a shorter clip. So we have these two layers now two coming over shift. while and he's speaking. Beer, bottle beer, coffee and some so it's a good idea in this way to put to add layers on your interviews. So now when you have the layers, the sound will also come as part of it and it might disturb your interview byte. So you want to push the cutaway frame and then you go up to the mixer on the top right corner and you lower the volume to zero, then the volume is away. And I do the same with the other cutaway picture. I go to the mixer and go away. So now when he speaks, it's just that and it's silent 
clips that will come and illustrate what he's talking about. So now let me just show you how you move around the different pictures. So you basically just press on the clip and then you can see with your finger, you can move it back and forth to where you want it. Um, and of course you can do that in the main timeline. Let's say I choose this clip and I want to move it to be the first interview byte, then I just move it to the front like that. So you can really easily move away your different layers. You cannot move a, a, a video from the basic main layer to become a second cutaway layer. So if you want to have the cutaway layers, the second and third layers, then you need to import the clip again from the layer uh, bar. So let me just show you uh, an example of where I have put in some cutaway pictures that really support what the interviewed person is saying. Yes, this table is usually considered a volunteer table. Uh, this is where the volunteers after the shift or who are coming on shift usually hang out. Uh, they play guitar, play games, uh, have a coffee together and have a laugh. They're also welcome to interact with the bar. So you could see really what it does that there's some supporting pictures for what the person is talking about. It makes it much more alive. So now we want to uh, add some text to our video. So again, we go to the layer bar and we push text and I write his name and let's see, Audrey is here. So the way that you can now, pl now play around with the text is with two fingers you can squeeze in or you can squeeze out according to how big you want the title and you can move it down, for instance, if you want it here on the right hand corner. And you have different options now to format your text. So as you can see in the top right corner, you have the font where you can choose different fonts that you want to use. So besides the font, the, the two other most important features are the color. So you can give the, the uh, title a different color. Let's try red. Okay, it doesn't look that great, but in case you like the red color, you can use that one. And then there's the in and out animation, which is also important in order to uh, make it a smooth transition in and out. So I'm just removing, you can see I'm moving the text layer to the beginning. Here he is. Okay, so now you can see it's not really, it just pops in. So I wanna fade it in and out. I can say in animation fade and in the, down, in the bottom, if you want it to fade more slowly or quickly, you can kind of slide it up and down there. So I want it to fade in. And also, when I push the text, again, I highlighted, I also want it to fade out. And um, you can now see how it comes in. Nice fading in and fading out. If you want it to be there for a longer time, you again push the clip and then with your finger, okay, be careful you don't move the whole clip, you just push one bar so that it will become stand longer or shorter. The KineMaster doesn't have this feature as maybe you have experience with some other apps that it has the main title and the subtitle. So if you want to have a subtitle in a completely different format, you just have to go in and make another text box. For instance, it says volunteer. And then you have to put it underneath. And you can see now maybe there's not that much space. So maybe you wanna move the first text box a little bit up. You can see you can also move it around in angles, but I would be careful with that. Whoop, here, and the second one. Here, Audrey is volunteer, you can move it like that. So when you have your two different text boxes, you want to make sure that they're the same length so that they come in and out at the same time. And the top one, you wanted it to fade in and out, you should do the same for the bottom one. An easier way would also be to just put audience and volunteer in the same text box 
uh, then they would just not have different fonts and different colors. So it wouldn't look as much as like a title and a subtitle. So now let me show you how to do transitions between the clips. So let's see these two clips that I have here. You can see there's a plus and that is the transition. So right now there's no transition, so it's just a jump cut from one frame to another frame. There are so many funky transitions, but I would recommend you to just keep it at the classic transitions, crossfade, for instance. And you can see then how the clip fades. The problem, however, is that when you do the crossfade, that it can sometimes take away some of your clip. As you can see, it can take away some of the speech. So make sure that you have clips that are extra long at the end, that you can um, make sure at the end that you have clips that you maybe want to prolong a bit at the end so that it doesn't take away and cut into what people are saying. So that was the transitions. Okay, so let's say you want to add a photo to your video. If you want to put it in the basic layer, you go up to the media and you can see on the left hand side, if you wanted video, as I showed you before, it's in the top. If you go to the middle and press photos, you can choose between your camera roll. So let's say here is a nice picture of the volunteers. We have it here. And um, you can now do some different formatting with the picture. So when I select the photo, I can zoom in, pan and zoom. So you can have what's called the Ken Burns effect. So let's say you want to start maybe, and here I'm moving on the screen itself. You want to start here and then you want to end maybe over there like this. And let's see how that looks. Now when you play it, you can see it has that, it's called Ken Burns effect, when you kind of slide over the picture to make it more, become more alive. So if you don't want your picture to move around, you can also, when you do pan and zoom, you can just press the equal sign here, and then you can see the start and end position is the same, so then it doesn't move. So you can see it's just a still picture. Other effects of your photo can be different filters um, that you can have to the picture, or you can see also in the adjustments, you can turn up the turn up and down the light or um, whichever you find appropriate. So when you're working with pictures and in general, there's so many different features of this app that you can play around with and explore by yourself. I'm just going through <coughs> the most basic useful features. So one of them is also music. So again, you go into audio, the right hand side, and let's just choose the first song here, City Grey. You press the plus and then you have it. And let me just zoom out to get an overview of my timeline. You can see the song is way too long. So first of all, I want to move it to the beginning. So I have the song during my whole clip and then it automatically ends. You can see it's dark, but just to make sure, I can also just cut it by selecting the song and you can trim, split it and you can trim to the right of playhead. Then you can see it now fits the length of your video. And now let's try to hear the clip with the music, what it sounds like from the beginning. table is usually considered the volunteer table. Uh, this is where the volunteers after the shift or who are coming. So you could hear the music is kind of on top of the interview. And it's one of the basic mistakes many people do in the beginning is to have too loud music over an interview. So be very aware of how to take down the volume of the music. And I will just show you how we do that. So I select the song. So to show you how to turn down the music, you go to the mixer and you can take it down to maybe 34%. So it's just like a fading background music. Table is usually considered the volunteer table. And then you could hear it. So as, you, as I showed you before, we have a picture also. So maybe you wanna turn up the music 
during the time of the picture because there's nobody speaking there. So you can use the fit the um, you, you can use a volume envelope. So you can see you push the volume envelope. So you can see here it makes a dot and then you can see when you turn up and down the music that it will fade up and down according to that. And if you then move over here and let's say you wanna, you can play around with this and then you can, you know, have it fade down again because the interview continues. So you can play around with that feature. It's quite helpful often. Everything on your mobile is quite small to work with. And you know, you wanna make sure you really press the right place and there's not a lot of space. So with two fingers, you can kind of zoom out also when things become too small. So you can see now, for instance, the picture gets bigger and bigger so that it's more easy to work with and you can be more detailed on the length of your clips. And again, if you think your whole video, you don't have the overview of it, you can with your two fingers zoom in so you can see, ah, okay, it's actually just this and this clip. Right now you can also see that the music is not showing. So you kind of scroll down and you can see the music is still here at the bottom. So let's say you're finished with your movie now and want to export it. So in the top right corner, you push the export and share button. And here you also have some different options. So you really want to make sure that your video is exported in the highest possible quality. Um, so if you have the space, which you hopefully have on your phone, you will slide all the way over to high quality and make sure that you export in the full HD resolution and 30 frames per second. And then you can push the export button and according to how long your video is, it will take some time for it to export. Okay, so now your video has already been exported. And if you go into your gallery or photos album in your phone, you can see that it is uh, here at the bottom of your gallery. But of course, if you wanna share it even further, you can push the share button and then you can have different options by email or for other social media to share it. But the most important thing is now in your gallery and from there on, you can also export it to YouTube or wherever you want to post it. Okay, so this was all I had for you in this KineMaster tutorial. Of course, it was a quite basic go through of the app and there are so many more tutorials, cool tutorials on YouTube that you can dive into. And then it's also really about just trying it out and get it getting it into your fingers. And I hope you will make some nice videos.